You are tuned in to the Geyer Football Radio Network. This is the Coach Rodney Webb Show, brought to you by BudBartleyHomes.com, Marty B's, the law office of Kimberly and Shanklin, Cloud Realty, and no one can give us the insight to Geyer Football quite like Coach Rodney Webb. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good to be on with you guys. Yes, sir. Well, you know, it's Christmas week, and uh, we're just headed into round three. Uh, a nice early present last Saturday at Globe Life Park with a double overtime win against a tough Arlington team. Uh, what a great win uh, for your program. Yeah, we were sure excited. You know, uh, Arlington was a very, very quality team uh, that played uh, just about their best game. I mean, they, they, they really played well in, in all phases, and it took everything we had to knock them off. Well, I tell you, Coach, having a, a healthy offensive line uh, made a huge difference. I mean, you guys pounded the ball on them all day. And John and I uh, were, uh, were I, I think it was like watching an old-fashioned Southwest Conference game. And we just pounded the ball in the same spot over and over all day and said, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There weren't a lot of explosive plays uh, in the game uh, on our part. Um, but that, as you said, that's exactly the, that was exactly the mindset. It was one of those games where, uh, you know, it was never more than a seven point differential at any point in time. And those are the kind of games that as a coach, you feel like, you know, every possession is critical. You cannot make a mistake on this possession. And so, um, you know, for us, it, it you know, it probably uh, looked to a lot of people like a very conservative plan, but, you know, it allowed our offense to stay on the field. It kept their offense off the field. And, uh, you know, we consistently ran the zone play, and they just didn't have a great answer. You know, we felt like they were going to play as man coverage all day. Uh, our whole plan was predicated on seeing man coverage uh, because you know, we just – we didn't think that uh, they felt like they could come out and play zone against us and, and give give us the zone play all day, and, and um, uh, that's what they did. So that's what we took from them uh, the entire day. Yeah, it looked like, uh, you know, from a, from a passing perspective – uh, wasn't one of uh, Eli's uh, best days. He seemed to be a little bit off. I mean, I mean maybe maybe he was a little bit confused by the, the coverage. Um, but, uh, you know, if you take away the, the long uh, tipped pass for a touchdown, which, I mean, to be honest, from our side, really should have been intercepted. Um, and, and then the, the one, uh, like, dig route that um, – that Demarcus Howard broke off for a longer run. We just didn't have a lot of success through the air, but he did have 103 yards on the ground. He made the, of course, the big play diving for the pylon at the end. And uh, BJ and Tyon just each with over 100 yards. I mean, some days you have to win it one way, and and others another. And you know, you're 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 part of being a quarterback is being a leader and a senior leader. You got to get it done one way, and and he did that way. What what we were impressed with that you might want to comment on was sort of like the overall calmness. I felt like the offense played with, you know, even when, um, even when uh, uh, Arlington would strike back and the game was clearly uh, not going to be one that we could, you know, pull away from them, just the overall calmness. And then, you know, making the big touchdown at the end um, to win the game, uh, kicking the field goal to tie, uh, was critical as another, you know, I believe Michael's another senior. Uh, tell us a little bit about that overall attitude and your senior leadership and, and the calmness in order to win a huge game like that. Well, you know, we've, we've had that air about us the whole year. And, um, we, you know, as you know, you guys know, you've covered us all year. And we've, we've been in some tight spots during the course of the season. And, and for the most part, we've responded really well. And so uh, we just feel like right now uh, we've got enough – uh, experience at playing close games and, and finding ways to win close games that uh, I don't think anybody panicked on Saturday. In fact, I, I praised our kids at the end of the game for the fact that they didn't panic. They, you know, they persevered and, and um, uh, we made the plays and we had to make them. And I've got full confidence moving forward, you know, through this, hopefully a playoff run that's going to last, you know, uh, four more weeks. Um We've got confidence that that you know when the the money's on the table and we got to we got to make a play that we're certainly going to do it. Well, coach Ar- Arlington had a few big plays in the second half to keep it very interesting. Uh, two long runs and a pass play that accounted for three quick scores. Um, did they surprise you some with their big play ability? 
No, in fact, we knew, and that's that's what we had to defend against. You, you, you had not seen any evidence the entire season of their ability to really just drive the ball, but they're so explosive. They're so athletic offensively, the quarterback, the tailback, and really three receivers um, that, that all were just uh, exceptionally athletic and, and uh, had the ability to, to, to make big plays at any point in time. And, and so that was part of, you know, uh, philosophically, offensively, we wanted to keep them off the field. And that's where, you know, we felt like, you know, going four and five yards a pop, even though we still played at a fast tempo because we feel like that gives us an advantage. You know, we're still able to turn out uh, several long drives. But, you know, you look back and and just like they did against everybody else this season, you know, they had their share of big plays where guys got in the open field and they were just impossible to tackle. Well, defense came up big in overtime. I thought they did a great job containing Chris Sims, especially that last play of the game when Rowan Briggs knocked down the pass to end the game. Uh, what can you say about the defensive effort uh, last Saturday? Oh, we're really proud of how they played. You know, again, with the exception of, you know, you just take away a handful of, of big plays, and they really played hard the entire day. Um, a very, very difficult offense to defend. Um, but, you know, we had guys that, uh, again, that stepped up and made big plays in big moments. Well, Coach, you, you're going to be uh, – we're going to be coming back uh, the day after Christmas – uh, but it's really going to be more like Groundhog Day, right? Same place, same time, uh, a, a different team. But, uh, you know, you talked about the uniqueness of uh, of that stadium. We thought it was really cool, right? Like um, the only the only difficulty was when the ball was on the opposite side of the field, it, it was hard for us to play or to give it a play-by-play call because you, could, you couldn't tell the exact down and distance. But other than that, we thought it was a great venue. So the only difference is we got a new ball club uh, to face us. So tell us a little bit about the Abilene Eagles. Uh, what uh, what can we expect to see Saturday? Well, you know, what I've told our kids this week about Abilene is that, you know, West Texas football is a little bit of a different brand of football. Um, I don't have a lot of experience playing teams in West Texas. I've got to go all the way back to the, 20, uh, the 2004 semifinals. Uh, when I was at Roy City, we played Abilene Wiley in the semis, but – uh, outside of that, I can only tell you what I see on film. It's just a little bit of a different brand of football out there. You know, um, Abilene is a – they're a very hard-nosed. They're a very tough group. Uh, they're not the most physically talented group that we've seen this year, uh, but they play as hard as, as anybody that we've seen. And, you know, that's a, that's a proud program with a lot of tradition. Uh, state championship, I think, 11 years ago. Uh, so they're certainly going to take the field – expecting to win the game and, and, and with a lot of confidence. So, um, you know, for us, it's just, it's going to be a matter of, as I tell you guys all the time, it's a matter of, of, of us playing well. And it's about, it's about the guy Wildcats. Um, but, it, but in terms of Abilene, you know, offensively, they're, they're a bunch of formation, uh, personnel groups. Uh, you're going to get three tight end, two tight end, one tight end, all the way to empty. Um, you'll get a little bit of all that, um, their their quarterback is a pretty good operator, uh, a dual threat guy. Uh, the tailback has been very successful this year. They they spread the ball around fairly evenly in the receiver core, and then defensively they're a three four, very similar similar to Arlington um, defensively in in terms of their structure, uh, very very similar to Arlington. And again, from a talent standpoint, uh, maybe a little bit of a step down, but from a from a heart and determination standpoint, probably a step up. One thing I can tell you is, for, uh, as Guy Wildcats are familiar with playing West Texas teams because we have been in this region, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'll bet you we have played West Texas teams six, seven times over the course of the last uh, 10 years and with both of my boys playing. It's been a while, I think it's been a while since we played Abilene, I believe Preston's junior year we may have played or sophomore year we may have played Adeline and uh, yeah they're always tough but one thing you get uh, from the from West is they run the football between the tackles well and and they do love to throw those two and three tight end sets at you they'll bloody your nose for sure yeah we're, we're, good. we're gonna have to step up the physicality for sure well, Coach Webb, uh, I had a chance to visit with head coach uh, Michael Fullen this week from Abilene. Uh, hey, well documented. I know you know him well. He's been involved in the Texas High School Coaches Association for a long time. He's battling colon cancer and going through treatment each and every week. Um, 
and uh, really just suiting up and showing up for his kids and the community. How does something like that uh, rally a team behind a longtime coach in the community like Coach Fullen? Well, I know everybody out there in that program wants to play hard for, for Coach Fullen. He's a great guy. He's a longtime Abilene Eagle. Uh, he's a guy that, that does it the right way. And he and I are good friends, and I've got a ton of respect for him. And, and um, I, I think it's a wonderful testament to his dedication to our profession that, you know, not only is he, uh, you know, persevering through this, uh, still undergoing cancer treatment, but he's doing it with this COVID virus going on too. And, and, you know, he's taking a lot of risks on behalf of his kids and his community for sure. Yeah. I enjoyed uh, visiting with him. Um, he mentioned, uh, his offense starts with quarterback, uh, Abel Ramirez, who last week, uh, in a tight win over North Crowley also had to kick field goals. So, you know, he's talented. Uh, he also has a one, two punch, in the backfield, he referred to him as Thunder and Lightning uh, and Fonzo Dotson and the King Thomas. I believe uh, Dotson, uh, leading rusher, 871 yards, uh, averaging six and a half yards a touch. Uh, wow. What's it going to take to slow these guys down? Well, we just got to make sure that, that we're, we're very sound defensively in our alignment and our assignment. You get so many formations from these guys that, you know, they're going to, if, if you're not sound, they're going to find a way to outflank you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's probably what they do best offensively. So uh, defensively, we just got to be sound in our alignment, sound in our assignment, and we got to be great tacklers. And Abel Ramirez, uh, wow, kind of uh, uh, pops off the stat sheet here, Coach. Uh, very efficient. Uh, 2,100 yards passing, 19 touchdowns on the year with only three interceptions. So you know they're going to uh, be attacking the, the guy or secondary. Yeah, yeah, they've been they've been fairly balanced all year. Um, you know, I feel like you know from a from a game plan standpoint, uh, they're gonna they're gonna be a little similar to what McKinney Boyd was against us. Where I think they want to play methodical, they want to play efficient. Uh, they would love to think they're gonna have multiple twelve to fifteen play scoring drives where they just efficiently move the ball down the field and and um, and finish with scores. So you know that's got to be their goal, and, and it's our goal to get them off the field. Yeah, I was going to mention McKinney Boyd and Prosper, two teams that that play like that within themselves. Don't they don't give you a lot of opportunities? And uh, I know you, you you just like everyone else. Well, we've got you know, guy has big playability. We we like to to play offense and control the game. Well, you love it when you can take the ball away from your opponent, and then you know, conversely, when they do not give you turnovers, they take care of the ball. It makes it tough because it limits your possessions, and, and that. You know, that's something that I know all coaches uh, are wary of when you play teams like that. Yeah, there's no doubt they want to they want to try to shorten the game, limit the number of snaps. You know, we're averaging on offense 71 snaps a game, and I think they would like to see that number down probably closer to 50 if they can get it down there. Yeah, we talked about that last week. You know, you, you guys are always trying to get to 80 and uh, other opponents, you know, trying to keep that down. Well, one of the stories all season long, Coach, has been the health of your team. You know, a lot of our big play ability um, has been sidelined uh, for multiple games this year. I know you'll be excited to get uh, – uh, sounds like we're going to get Jordan Eubanks back this week, or at least it seems like he's he's available to play. Um, will there be any other players that have been nursing injuries that might be back in uniform uh, Saturday? Uh, well, we, yeah, we will have Jordan back this week. He's he's been fully cleared and he's full go. Uh, uh, it's had a great week of practice. Um, and we're going to be playing him at Sam linebacker. You know, before his injury, he played the what we call the cat position, the middle safety. Marquand Pope has just done such an outstanding job in that spot, and then Peyton Bowen filling in. You know, where Marquand played early in the year at outside safety. So uh, we're, we feel like Jordan's best fit at this point in time is Sam linebacker and. And uh, so he's going to he's going to get his reps there, and then uh, really that's it for for uh, uh, injury wise. That's that's about all we're getting back this week. Grayson Obar is close. Um, in fact, our, we're we're hoping that he's at a point that at least by Saturday he can he can be in uniform, get through the pregame warm up, and and possibly give us a few reps during the game on Saturday. Optimistically, but uh, we just don't want to we don't want to push him. You know, those hamstrings are are delicate. Muscles, and, and we don't want him to have another setback. Yeah, well, the one thing about that is, like you said, if he can get through warm-ups, just having him in uniform on the sidelines is a thing. Anytime you've got a, a big play guy like that who you can put in uniform, it just at least it keeps in the back of your mind from an opposing coaching position or perspective, excuse me, that that guy's there on the sidelines. 
Well, we, we always like to sort of uh, end these things, Coach, with a little bit of a laugh and a little bit of lightheartedness. Uh, this time of the year, we know it's always one and done, so you guys got enough pressure. And, and we've asked you enough tough questions. So are you ready for this last one? This one's going to be difficult now. Yeah, fire away. Okay. Will there be a picture available on Facebook this this week with – Coach, wife, and daughter in matching footy pajamas um, around the Christmas tree. <laughs> I would say this: the the only chance of that happening, uh, there would there would have to be a a, a generous uh, amount of cash involved. We can probably uh, get that funded. That we can probably get that funded, Coach. We we probably yeah, there's, you know. And donate well, it to charity. A, we could donate it to Mission Moms. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, I'd be, I'd be good with that. There's a yeah. There's a there's a price for just about anything, you know. Yeah, I love it. Well, all right, folks. That wraps up this week's coaches show for Coach Rodney Webb and my partner Rick Threlkill. Uh, I'm John Piper saying so long and join us again Saturday for more great Texas high school football playoff action. We're moments away from kickoff. Don't go away. We'll be right back to bring you Geyer versus Abilene on the Geyer Football Radio Network.